Chum 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 of the month. So I would like very much to welcome for Chum of the Year, it's kind of becoming now, but certainly for the next month, the gorgeous, wonderful, amazing Irish composer, Gerald Barry. Gerald, thank you so much for being my Chum of the Month. <laughs> so glad you invited me. You have been desperate to be my Chum of the Month for <laughs> Yes, months, you've been avoiding it for I don't know how long. Well, we just didn't have the opportunity in our glamorous <laughs> yeah. lifestyles. Um, so we're here in Dublin at the moment for mm -hmm. um, the Irish premiere of your Alice's Adventures Underground. Yeah. Tell us about Alice and how she came about and, you know, how I came about to be your doormouse <laughs> extraordinaire. Yes, exactly. And my Miss Prism and whatever else. <laughs> um, well, I was lying in a hotel bedroom sick one afternoon before a concert performance, in which you were in, it was probably your fault, uh, in, uh, in, in Birmingham. And oh, I, I remember. And it was I, your 60th birthday. I, it was. It was. I think, yeah. And I was uh, feeling stop, absolutely terrible. Stop nudging out yeah, of the picture. Yeah, I was feeling terrible. And uh, suddenly it came into my head, the idea. And I called out of bed and I <laughs> marched into town, as sick as a dog, and went into this bookshop and bought the Penguin book, Annotated Alice. And then I rushed back to my room and started all, uh, um, making a version of it immediately. Um, but um, as always with me, I always think I have uh, an original idea, and I suddenly I didn't quite realize that there were other hundreds, hundreds oh, of God, uh, versions. She's very much a la mode, isn't she, <laughs> yes. old Alice? But so I decided not to do Alice in Wonderland, call it that. Mm. I called it Alice's Adventures Underground, which was the first title of the right, first yes, private publication. I yeah, I know. And I, so I can't remember why he changed it, because I, I prefer... Uh, uh, yes, I quite like that. Well, I suppose Wonderland, it's all... Mm. I don't know. Yeah, it all same. Yeah. Thing. So now, um, our collaboration, Joe. Yes. So I first um, came to your music in The Importance of Being Earnest, and I was mm. asked if I wanted to do the. Well, in fact, I was saying, do you want to be in The Importance of Being Earnest? So, of course, I assumed I would be Lady Bracknell, yeah. because, you know. Yeah. And then I said, oh, no, 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 no. Lady Bracknell's being played by a bass. And I thought, oh, my God, what sort of, <laughs> what sort of monster is this? Yeah. And uh, anyway, so I met you for that, and you'd already written it, I think, by the time I was involved. Yeah. However, I mean, it was very distinctive uh, range-wise. I mean, was was I in mind when you were doing it, or I can't. did you just think, right, I'm going to write bottom C's and hope that there was some yes, freak of woman that can sing? Yes, them? of course. Yes, because <laughs> you have a freakish bottom. And, Thank you kindly. Yeah, and, uh, I don't know if anybody else can get down there, but well, you just wrote them anyway. I so. think I, I can't remember. I, I, maybe I did have you in mind. I mean, I knew about you. you well, see. we I did Skype. We Skype while you were sort of in the throes, and you just said, "Oh, I've got this great, um, this great aria of you doing the um, the Ode to Joy in German," and I was thinking, "What? I don't oh. remember that in the original play." All right, exactly. <laughs> so uh, yes, well, you you as you and. Uh, that you have a glorious Lucy, and uh, so I had to use it. And it probably will mean that the opera will be rarely performed now because yeah, but want... you've got Ossias. Oh you, yeah, you've got okay, Ossias. Okay. So, so okay, as long as you put in the Ossias, yeah, then people uh, will do it. So um, there's the, the, yeah, and so we have been um, as one ever since. When was the earnest? When did that first happen? Was it 2012 something like that? Uh, it was, was the first concert performance in Genesis. Los Angeles. Yes. Yeah, absolutely in LA. The yeah. Walt Disney Concert Hall. And, um, and then... Well, several the productions Barbican. of it, yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, you, you've been in... I've two been two out of the three productions. Okay, yeah. I didn't do the um, yeah. French one. Yeah, okay. But, um, um, yeah, no, it's great. Yeah. So do you think Alice will get on stage? Because people have sort of said, oh, it's so... I mean, we're, we're all multi-charactering. Yeah. So basically we all have lots and lots of characters mm. to do. Um, except for Alice. Um, so, you know, I mean, how I think it's totally feasible to do it. I think it would be Well, I mean, be, be, people are saying, how, uh, how is it possible to stage it? Because it moves uh, super, super fast. Uh, but I think that one doesn't have to be li literal, I mean, in the staging. And one, you know, you can, I mean, sometimes the characters change every 10 seconds or whatever it might be. But I think that's, that's doable, isn't fine. it? By a bit of imagination. Uh, yes, and kind of some cinematic input or whatever, I don't know. But, um, and I don't mind uh, one's, one singer being several characters at the same time and never even bothering to change. Yeah, I yeah, don't know. Me, I, don't think, yeah. I think it's absolutely fair. As long as you know, it's clear that it's a different character. Yeah, yes, yeah. Um, now, apart from being a, um, a tremendous composer, you're also a pretty demonic pianist keyboard oh. player, aren't you? <laughs> as we discovered the other night in a great concert um, here at the New Music 
festival here in Dublin. Mm. And you, um, t- well, tell us about it. Well, it was absolutely a um, horrifying experience <laughs> uh, because, uh, but uh, uh, thankfully it ended um, not too... It wasn't but, horrifying for us. We thought it was great. Yeah, anyway, okay. I, I, I Look, I'm not a performer. I used to be, perform decades ago, but I haven't done it. You were before. an organist, weren't you? Yes, I was. I used to give kind of concerts and all that stuff. Yeah. But, and play as a pianist. But I haven't done it for years. And so then somebody suggested that Tom and I play these two piano chorales from my first talk with the Intelligence Park. Mm. And I, you know, f- you know, foolishly agreed. And um, when I was in my dressing room and the intercom said 15 minutes to stage, five minutes to stage, I sat down at this upright piano in my dressing room and I couldn't recognize any of the music. I was in such a state oh, of terror. Oh, my so my fingers wouldn't... Um, just wouldn't re- react to the things I practiced. Classic stage. And right? yes, I know. And um, I just seen that film actually, Dance in the Dark with Bjork, which oh. ends with her being brought the uh, uh, from her cell to the scaffold and hung. And that's how and, you and, felt. and uh, the jailer <laughs> says, "Now uh, she had bond- they bonded, and she said, they said it's 20, 127 steps, and I will walk with you." And she's going one, two. So Tom knocked on the door and said, "It's time." So oh, wow. you know, we walked oh, along oh, this long no. corridor. And and uh, <laughs> uh, and then suddenly out of nowhere, this man came out, uh, uh, stepped in front of us, and said, "Can I take your photograph?" <laughs> I said, "No." <laughs> and uh, so then we went, well, we were on, on the, in the wings and on opposite sides of the station and walked yes. on. And I'm not exaggerating. During the first chorale, I thought, as I was playing, and. Uh, I thought, I can get up now and walk off stage. It means I can never leave my house again or look anyone in the eye because I've had a public breakdown. And uh, But I pressed on, so you, I've now broken the barrier of you terror. You absolutely did. But I think most of us go through things like that, thinking, oh, God, I've got this bit coming up, and oh, God, if it goes wrong, if, if I crack it, or... And right. then you maybe you do crack it, and you don't die, and you right. don't, the end of the world doesn't happen, and you just think, well, okay, I split a note in public, and, yeah. you know, nothing... But I mean, you, but you've been happened. doing this all your life, so you must be, you're so seasoned now. You don't, you don't, um, you don't suffer, still suffer from that, do you? I have to say, the more you practice something, the less stage fright you get, because yeah. you're just more secure in what you're doing and the, mm. you know it's things that you have to do mm. on the hop um, that maybe sort of aren't rehearsed well or yeah. aren't rehearsed enough and you just feel a bit oh, I don't really know what I'm doing and yeah. then then of course you bluff yeah. and you just get through it or if you're going on stage and you've got a cough or a cold and you don't you literally don't know what's coming out which yeah. is what happened with you in one of the, my last performances of the yeah. Alice, uh, yeah. the Ernest, Ernest yeah. and yeah. I was literally there going ah, ah, <laughs> and horrible things coming out yeah. just I mean you just don't know what's going to happen so no, that's so, awful so, but um, I always um, equate it if I had to go on stage and play the piano, mm. I would be paralysed. I couldn't do it. I just could Because yeah. I'm not, you know, I wouldn't have practised enough and I wouldn't, I'm, I'm not confident enough because that's not my thing. Mm. So, but singing is kind of my thing, so I'm, I mm. don't get the nerves as badly. Mm. Recitals, I think, are tricky as well because always there's the memory thing. Mm. And if you haven't rehearsed it enough, you're just thinking, oh, well, I remember that bit and I always get wrong at that bit. Yeah. And the bit that you go wrong and you always go wrong in that bit because yeah. you, you psych yourself into it, really. Yes. Yeah. Um, but, um, it's so strange. I don't know, and I think you know the older you get as well, you just think, oh well, you know, people yeah. are still paying to hear me, so yeah. <laughs> brazen it out, yes, you know. Exactly, <laughs> but it was so strange. After my moment of terror of nearly walking off stage, then when as things were going on, I thought this is not going so badly actually, and I suddenly began the room. I had windows of enjoyment, Excellent. and suddenly by the time we got off stage, I was suddenly thinking, I'm looking forward to the oh. next. Tour. And suddenly I turned into a, 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 an impossible bore, and people. <laughs> We'll say we'll get back to you because I'll be wanting to perform these <laughs> yes, things all exactly, the time. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Oh, can't we do that? Yeah. I thought um, Tom was. I mean, it was lovely the rapport that you had. It was. Mm. It was really sort of you know so you, you the connection between you over the piano. Yeah, I yeah, thought yeah. was very very touching. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, you're obviously such close and good friends. Yeah, yeah, and, um, yeah. Yeah, I thought he really looked after you. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, and he's, I, I mean, what an amazing... Oh, he's a wonderful guy. Yeah, really he's a virtuoso. I mean, I mean, I will... Yeah, he is virtuoso, amateur, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what's coming up um, composition-wise? Anything exciting? Um, oh, tell, tell us about... Um, um, humiliated and, uh, and insulted, insulted, insulted. Yes. and uh, <laughs> abused. <laughs> I, I, well, yes, I wrote this uh, uh, piece for 150 um, member amateur choir called the RT National Symphony Orchestra Philharmonic Choir. You know, these orchestras have these. Is that the one here in Dublin? The one in Dublin. Yeah. Dublin. Anyway, it's co-commissioned by with the Royal Scottish National oh, okay. Orchestra Philharmonic Chorus, and it will be done in Edinburgh on the 5th of May and Glasgow on the 6th of May. Oh, good. And um, 
so it was done here. And it went incredibly well. So I, it, it, uh, but it's all very well to have this idea that you're going to make 150 uh, amateurs sing the words humiliate and other over and over again. Uh, it's, by the way, it's the title of an early Dostoevsky novel. And, oh, uh, uh, but it's one, one thing to have that uh, mm -hmm. when you're alone and deciding it. But then you walk into a room to rehearsal and you see this 150 people staring at you. And you, oh. uh, what you were subject them to is kind of <laughs> terrifying. Oh, so, has anyway, it been there? Has the, is that happened? Yeah, well, it has been done. And then, do you want me to do it in yeah, Scotland? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then things coming up in the pipeline? Performances um, of things? Or yes, I things? am writing a piece for um, Alan Clayton <gasps> and Orchestra. Alan! Yes, I know. He, I, I love oh, him. He's great. I love him too. Yeah, I really do, actually. And... Um, so he was in Alice, of course, as you know. Uh, yes, he, in, he in premiered the um, well, yeah. White Rabbit, and you name it, basically. He was doing every role in it. Wasn't yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, no, he's wonderful. So yeah. I'm writing this because I can't say what it is exactly okay. yet. But right. it's for him, and it's for uh, next year. Oh, and, lovely. Uh, yeah. And... Um, have you got a text and things sorted out? I have. Okay. Do you do you work like that? Do you tend to get your text first and then your idea, or do you have an idea and then you find a text to suit it, or how? Well, um, uh, usually the text comes first, yeah. actually, and that gives me the you know the spur or whatever. I mean. And you like um, working your own librettos, don't you? Because you did your own earliest from yours. Yeah, yeah, yes, I mean... Uh, but I think that makes sense. I think it's very logical. Yeah, I mean... It, it, that yeah. inspire you. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I've heard maybe with a certain earlier operas in having text which is uh, or perhaps a bit too dense or something. And uh, But I, I wish people wouldn't complain so much about uh, text in opera mm -hmm. and go with the thing as, uh, I don't know, an artistic experience, I guess, if they went into the National Gallery... And looked uh, looked at uh, Goya's or whatever, and not ask too much, and just not to want to understand everything. You know? Well, I, I take your point, but I think that the, one of the main things that a voice has over instrument is that we produce it. You know, we deliver a text. Yeah. So you know, we can actually make words. Yeah, so I know. if you know, if you don't, if you take that away, and it's not just vocalese, mm. then we're going to miss something. If, if the singer is singing a text, yeah. and we're missing that. Yeah. Then we're missing part of what the singer's doing. But you're being paid. <laughs> I mean, as an audience member. Yeah, you know. I mean, they're not being paid, are they? If they're paying their and there are people going rah, 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 in the text, and you're thinking, well, I've I no idea. But okay. I think it's very good that you uh, these days we have su super titles or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And I think that's very good to hear. Though actually, I did like that production of Anthony McDonald's of Ernest that you were in, where he had no subtitles. Well, and that forced the audience really to yes. focus on you. Exactly. And that was a, yeah. I, that was quite a courageous thing to do, and I thought that was good. I it think. was, and I think a lot of time was spent on getting the balance. Mm. And because they were underneath in a pit, yeah. that makes a big difference to balance. I think when you're on stage with mm. all the instruments going, yeah. it's a lot harder to balance mm. that. Yeah. Um, although I don't think there's a problem to that. I think only, it's only the dialogue that we're using um, yeah. amplification for. I, I think there's more and more a, a, a sp spoken stuff in my operas. But maybe I turned into a complete... I just give, give up writing musicals. <laughs> just write theatre plays <laughs> in, in specific <laughs> rhythms. Yes. That would be hilarious. Yeah. Which singers must do, but they never get to sing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so that's for you and your old age. Ideal. You yes, please. I'd like a, an old age pension cash cow. <laughs> Gerald, I have to prepare my beauty for your okay. next stage. Okay. So thank you very, very much well, for being my show of the month. Mwah. <laughs> Mwah.